Welcome, welcome to Unseen Sports TV. Yes, people. Today we have a top shell interview, top shell video. Yes. Former reggae boys, assistant coach. Went to World Cup with Rene Simoes. You know. Former technical director of Jamaica football. Of Jamaican, of Brazilian. Alfredo <laughs> Montesso. Alfredo Montesa, I will let you talk to the people and tell them more about yourself. <laughs> First of all, thank you for the invitation, Java uh, Parchment. Yes, and uh, uh, I appreciate every time to be talking with Jamaicans, as you said, because half of my heart I left in, in the island because um, if you count the three exchange that I was in there in Jamaica, uh, right. I lived more uh, around 12 years in Jamaica, so 10 to two, 11 to 12 years in Jamaica. That was a great part of my life. I got married in Jamaica, man. Unfortunately, was not with a Jamaican woman, but as a, was a Brazilian, no? But my, my, my wife cannot hear that. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I love the country, I love the people, and um, I love what we did with the, the football in Jamaica. And um, I love the food, I love the beach, you know? So. Which one I love, beef? No, beach, the beach. Beach, beach. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The beef as well, you know? Because <laughs> you remember, you know, Javan, uh, one day we went to a supermarket. Yes. Lucio Sun. I remember that. And I step inside of the the, the place that the guys send uh, sell the beefs to teach them how to cut a special part as we did as you do for barbecue in Brazil. You know that we call that we call a a, a, a picanha. And then we we teach the guy how to what the piece that we love to eat, you know? So the beef is is a, is a very nice thing in, that I, I, I love in Jamaica as well. Because we did the guy learning how we how we caught here in Brazil, you know? So it was really nice. It was a great time. It was a great time. And I remember always with a lot of a lot of passion, especially for the friends that I left in Jamaica. The, the the fans that we we left in there the the, the supporters the footballers you know all okay. of them was a was, always is a pleasure to be to be talking with you guys mm. yeah so what is your fondest non-footballing memory in jamaica well no football uh, memory yeah best memory ever in jamaica with wow. no football Man, I have a lot of a lot of memories, you know, a lot of memories in Jamaica. I remember then the first time when I when I when I went to Jamaica in, in 96. I remember to to live in a hotel and and uh, the first the first involvement the first time that I, I start to get in touch with Jamaica food. You know, I, I remember that I don't speak so much English. I, I still don't 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 speak so much, but it's much <laughs> better than before. Can you imagine it? back in '96? <laughs> but the first thing I learned to say in Jamaica is please no pepper. <laughs> <laughs> too spicy. And, uh, too spicy, man. By by the time I I, I, I didn't I didn't express so much uh, very well myself, you know, so but I have to learn because, but it was I, I when I got I love today I love my food with with spice you know, so it, it's something that I got accustomed. Uh, a lot of memories, man. A lot of a lot of them. The first time that I went to Casablanca with the 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 Olympic team because we did that part of the country port in Port Antonio. Our 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 home, you know, by the period of time to prepare the Olympic team for for '96, 
and uh, was was really wonderful really wonderful next question what's your favorite jamaican food wow man i remember i remember to ask the the chief i remember samuel chief samuel that was the chief he he died years ago and he was from the arm and he, he was recruited to go for the the national team you know and i remember that he did that uh, he always always cook to the to the guys and to the team the ox, oxtail oxtail you know? <laughs> yeah and uh, uh yeah the oxtail uh, yeah and i will always got some some recipient in my house take to him and say chef you're going to cook oxtail today so please <laughs> you know please. put some something aside for me because i have to take home you know and uh, because we finish and then after we practice we go for um, we go home you know we leave the, the boys the boys in the in, in the players house in the players residence and um, chef always cook the oxtail and leave some some recipient for me you know that was a wonderful this is still my my best remember my best uh the food that i most like in jamaica all right which food you didn't like which food you didn't like when i thought which jamaican uh, food you didn't like man I, I i am i am a guy with a simple taste you know so simple everything taste. yeah i like to test everything i remember the, <laughs> the boys when 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 we get back when you get in jamaica the boys they never like to taste any kind of different food you know so just jamaica food and so and I, and i had no problem with that always <laughs> but you know if i can say something that i i didn't taste so much was the was the uh, boiled dumpling you know that i don't say that i don't eat but i prefer the fried dumpling all the time you know more than more than boiled dumpling <laughs> our next question do you but like red stripe beer wow man <laughs> red stripe beer is you, you know that we find that in brazil huh? you find that in brazil yes i have a, i have a store here in my city that they export um, many different beers around the world you know and uh, red stripe is still is still one of my favorites I don't drink so much, you know, but if I want to drink some beer and I, I want to remember, get some memory from Jamaica, I drive 10 minutes from my house, get in the store and brought some back some, grab some uh, red stripe beer and then I put in the fridge and then, you know, remember a little bit from Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, what's your assessment on the current national team so far? The current national team? Yeah, I have been following not so so straight right now. I can okay. tell you because um, I am involved in a business here in Brazil and then uh, this is taking a lot of... I, I, I'm running one academy We're here in Brazil. Okay. Yeah, in Brazil right now working with youth boys and then developing them try to uh, to helping them to get a, a, a direction in football even in 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 American colleges as well you know I am doing running a business here as well with with uh, um, um, a different sports beach sports especially okay. in the sun you know so i'm directing this this academy as well so uh, it is a, a lot of business but uh, and and the time is very short for me right now but every, of course that i've been following the team and been following the the job that theodore whitmore is putting together with the boys you know and um can tell you that they're doing pretty well you know for the the, the research that they have the 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 this period of time with covid you know so the covid is doing is is causing a lot of trouble 
not only for national teams, but especially for the clubs. The resources is short, even short. You no, know, we know how how Jamaica's they they struggle with with uh, money in football, especially in football. You know, and uh, I know that even now in this period of time is worse. And um, I have been following the results. The Jamaican national team is is getting a. a, a, a a pretty decent result, especially for the times that they are passing now. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what are your views on the debate about the use of local born players versus the English born players? I always had in my mind, you know, that uh, it's very important for a country, a Caribbean country like Jamaica, to have a uh, local base base players, you know. Right. Because this can give the they can give the, the national team some kind of uh, basement. You know, you cannot construct a house without having a basement. You know, a, a very strong base to to be running. So this was always our idea when we were in Jamaica with Coach Simões, and uh, even when I was alone, when I was. The technical director with Professor Gama in the first in the in, in a period of time, and then when I become the the the, the technical director, is to have one local base players always connect always uh, in giving a base because when we brought the foreigners players to get in the national team, and you have a base is more it, it, it's easier. For the for the staff to pass to the other group uh, uh, the mentality the philosophy that you are putting in there because those base players they are they are the link right, between right. between those guys you know so right. that's always was the idea and I still believe really strong that any national Caribbean team has to have the local base to be uh running in that direction to receive the the the, the foreigner players the overseas players and then is spread with them the in the nice you no know? so this was this was with what we did all the time that we were in Jamaica and uh, for sure work really well as you as the result that we got in there you know okay because um no I, like all covid it is umpering our football or local um, Premier League. It's kind of difficult for JFF to, to, to pick players, right? Because they, they, they're, they're out for a year, not playing any football. And, mm -hmm. you know, athletes from England, you know, the English based players, you know, put their interest in playing for Jamaica. And mm -hmm. Whitmore is using them to see where they are in terms of football and stuff. And so far, some of them are impressive. In terms of the game um this morning you know we draw one one with serbia mm. so it, it it is difficult for some of the local base player to to, to, to be put in this team right now yeah there is that, that yeah i know there is two different situations in that you know first of all i believe that the national staff is doing the right the right decision right now take this time to to check or to see some of all those players that are available in 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 Europe or whatever around the world where they where they are, but in the second in the other side of the coin, uh, there is the the JFF body uh, governation. You know because I believe that this is the time that JFF has to put a more effort to help the local players to pass through the COVID period of time. You know, so those players is not only only the the, the matter to don't have a chance to be involved in the national program. You know, okay, let us take this time to to see some more players, to test some more players that are available to be playing, uh, especially in England or in Europe, to see how they can they can fit in the national program. But let put some some program together, especially for the local players. To give them the opportunity to still, you know, 
to still uh, 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 training themselves, to still getting a chance to develop in themselves for the future, you know? And I, that have to be creative, they have to to think in different, in, in, out of the box, you know? Cannot be thinking just in one direction, has to be find in this difficult time some kind of uh, um, situation that can give those players the opportunity that they deserve. Okay. Um, you were the assistant coach in 1997, 1998 campaign. Tell us about your experience through the campaign leading up to the World Cup. Yes, I, I, Javan, I was, I was the assistant and um, especially uh, connected with the, the physical part of the, 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 the or the physical assessment of the team. And of course, because of my background as, as a football player, as a PE teacher, you know, uh, we graduate ourselves here as a coach in Brazil through the PE university. And uh, of course, to me, was was a, a great opportunity to develop all those, those kind of things, you know? And um, for me, it was a wonderful experience was an experience that we we were working with guys that really were not a, a, a full professional players. You no, know, they became they became professional players through the the period of time that we were working together, and um, was was amazing. Nobody, I can tell you that um, back in Brazil when we returned back in our country. Nobody could believe that a team that we brought in 95 in Brazil with uh, the quality, exper international experience, could achieve after two years a World Cup competition, you know, final competition. So it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> of course, the credit has to be put in, in, in the boys. You boys. Know, the, yeah, of course, because of course we have we, we, the staff works well. The staff to work together, but they were open mind. They were accepting our our inputs with them, and uh, they did a lot of effort to to achieve one thing that nobody believe, you know. And of course, those guys they have to be giving them all the credit is possible because uh, they really deserve that. Okay, okay. So, um, who, who was the most excited player to watch in the 1998 um, camp, 1997 campaign? Yeah, on, on the team. Listen, you can tell you, you can tell like um, you have some great players with great ability, you know. So when you see a, a, a show off player, you know. You could talk about Walter Boyd. You could Walter talk Boyd. about, you could talk about Nandlu, you know. But in my point of view, football is played nine percent with mind and ten percent with your legs, you know. And right. uh, in this, in this part of the game, in this style of the game. The most impressive player for me in that campaign was Peter Cargill, you know. Uh, he was not only a player, he was a very good friend of mine, you know. And uh, But he was a cerebral player. He was the... the you know, you know <laughs> when you need, you, you need a, a, a coach inside the field, and then one of those players, they take this leadership. Sometimes he never wear the band in his arm, but he was the leader all the time, you know? And he was the player that if something is doing wrong in the right side, he step a little bit by the, by the center of the field and solve the problem in there, you know? So he was this kind of player that impressed me in the way that I love to play the game. That is played by mind and not only leg, you know. Okay, so what was the problem with Walter Boyd in terms of training and stuff like that? 
I believe that Walter Boyd, Walter Boyd was, you know, a, a kind of player <laughs> that don't get matured so so early, you know. It's like when you have a, a son or you have a kid that he he has a great talent. He he gets everything easy in his life, mm -hmm. you know. I used to say I, I, I direct some some youth programs in Brazil and uh, I used to get some players and this is going to fit what I'm gonna say to you today. This is going to fit exactly exactly same for what happened with Walter Boyd and some sometimes with Fernando Lu as well by the time, you know. Uh, when you get a player, like I, I work for Victoria da Bahia here in Brazil, directing the youth categories for them, you know. And uh, we have some players there that, that always they were calling for under 19, under 17, under 15 national program here in Brazil, you know. And those players, they don't, they, they have everything like when they get, when they go for the national team and they get back to the club, they have everything easy in their life. So like with uh, a guy with 17 years old, he gets a call for the professional team and then the, he starts to play there. And when he returns for his under 17 group, he looks b bigger than what he thinks that he is, you know? He never received a no in his life. Okay. So most of those players, they never get really in a good position in a professional team here in Brazil. Uh, this was clear for me. And uh, you know what? A player that become a professional is the one that always was there in the bench, in the, in the under 17, under 15, and he learned how to suffer the situation, the pressure that he has to be uh, a fit in the team, you know? So this can give those guys more maturity and, uh, you know, building them with one atmosphere that when he step in the professional level, he knows how to suffer, he knows how to receive a no, he knows how to be sitting in the bench, he knows how to be relegated by the coach by one time. You understand what I mean, Parchman? Yes, yes. You understand? So yes. those guys, they, they suffer, they get more, it's like a, it's like a, a, a precious, precious stone that take from, you know, the sea, the water, but beat them all the time and then he's, they start to get strong and become a great professional player, you know? Yes. So this is my point of view. And this is what happens sometimes with uh, Walter Boyd. Walter Boyd was always a great player, but he never knows how to receive a no in his life. So sit in the band and see the game there, you know? So if you don't play as a team player, you know, if you want to play only for yourself, you're going to have to sit a little bit and see someone to sit in there. So he doesn't know to deal with, with this That's situation. Situation. Yeah. And uh, okay. always, this is what, in my point of view, but let me tell you, he's my great friend, you know. I love the boy. I love the guy, you know, because he was, he was a nice guy, but he doesn't know how to deal with those situations, you know. Okay, okay. So and you know, and you know, in football, in life, is that you right. know, sometimes you 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 apply for for one job, and the guy is going to say, "Listen, you are not good enough," and then you're going to have to go again. You remember Cafu? Cafu. Cafu, Cafu was the captain of nine, uh, 2002 Brazilian team World Cup uh, champion. You know, Cafu. He played for São Paulo Football Club in Brazil. He went in for São Paulo for eight trials. Eight. <laughs> he went one time, sent back home. Second time, sent back home. Seven time, he was sent back home. In the eighth time that that he went for a trial, he got picked to the to the São Paulo club and then became the player that he was. You know. And the guy that learned how to receive no in his life 
persist in what he wants and became what he was. Okay. So um, could you tell us about the, the selection process back then? How, how you guys select players to, to, to be a part of the national team? I can't believe that people watch the game in Jamaica, but I don't believe that someone watched more games than myself back in those days, you know? <laughs> I was every single match. I can tell you, man. I can tell you that I went for for any every single place in Jamaica to watch to watch guys playing football. I remember well, League football too. Everyone. <laughs> you know, I, I can tell you this story, but I don't know if someone told you that, but we were driving driving to Port Royal, right. you know, because you know that one of the best fishes in Jamaica is cooking in Port Royal, you know? Right. <laughs> so we, we were driving there, and suddenly we're, we were driving, and we saw some boys playing football in the street, you know? And then we were picking the team for the under-17 team to the World Cup. You remember the under-17 went to New Zealand yeah. back in 1999. I don't know if you were if you were um, uh, I'm, born I'm in that time. I'm not familiar with that one. <laughs> uh, you are familiar, no? And um, we saw a guy play in the street and then we stopped to see him play and said, listen, guy, you are attached within team. He said... Yeah, I play football for Harborview, but we saw him playing in, in the street with some friends, you know. Say, so can you come for the, the the national team under 17 train? Yes, I can. So this guy was Keith Kelly. So selection, Javan, is that is watch, you know, go again, see the guy, call for train, call for practice. See once, see twice, see three times, and then you know you start to building the team in that direction. So Keith Kelly went for Paris Saint Germain after that 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 thing, you know. So this is the selection. Selection is a matter of persisting. Watch the guy, analysis. You know, by the time to be honest with you. We didn't have a, 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 a document that could orientate us. Today, we work in, in a different direction. Right. We, have, we have one document, every club that we go, that we find, listen, we want a goalkeeper with this characteristic. And then we can train a group of scouts that going for different, different games and uh, scout in the direction that we want. Right. So there is a bio biological characteristic, there, there is a, a technical characteristic, there is an attitude characteristic that we want to see in different players and that the, the player can fit in your team. So all those components today, they form one characteristic of players that we, can, we, we were looking for. So it's easier for us in this kind of environment to be to be analyzing players and to be scouting players. Okay. Um, Marlon okay. Nelson said, how has Jamaica progressed since his time being here? I believe that Jamaica progressed a lot. You know, I don't I, I don't remember. I don't remember. No, I remember few, few Jamaican players playing overseas, you know. Remember that we, we had we had uh, Peter Cargill that came from Israel by the time. We had uh, Altmar Butler that played in, in, in USL in, in America, I believe, or he played in Portugal as well. You know, he had one of those experiences. But most of the players, they were playing locally, you know. And, uh, of course, when you see today the... the the bench of players that are around the world, Jamaican players, they are around the world. This is a, a, a this is one this is one 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 thing that can show how how Jamaica improving improving football around the world. You know, 
so the girls as well you know how the girls achieve how they develop yeah the girls uh, yeah the girls you know i remember um, to be training them as well to be following the the, the girls and uh, how they struggle to to find a place and today you see uh, jamaican girls play with marta in orlando city so they are around the world as well so the improvement of jamaica in the football area is tremendous it's getting better it's getting better yeah all the time it's getting better all right you have function as the technical director here at jamaica and also in brazil tell us about your role as a td and the difference working here against working in brazil I believe that we have more responsibility to work in, with a national team. You know, I, I never work with Brazilian national team as a technical director. I work okay. with a clubs here. You know, okay. when when you have the clubs, um, I believe that uh, in the club you have a, 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 a small number of uh, players or a small number of choices that you can do with with players you know with national teams of course that we can <coughs> open more this 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 kind of uh, opportunity you know you have opportunity to see players around the world you have opportunity to please to see the best players in the best teams you know and uh, i believe that this is the difference between work as a technical director in jamaica and uh, and uh, in brazil in jamaica we were of course responsible for the formation of coaches and uh, i involved myself pretty much in the in the coach school and uh, this was something that i love to do in jamaica as well see coaches that i find I, I i see in premier league today they pass through the through the through the uh, JFF uh, school system, and this was really really the really a, a, a very very nice thing that we we were involved in there. The grassroots program was something that we we love to to work as well to be working with festival around Jamaica, you know, so we could we could be be seeing the poor people and. Uh, the poor guys playing football in every single corner in Jamaica. This was a wonderful time for me as well, you know. So okay. I, I enjoy pretty much to do those those kind of work in, in, as a technical director in Jamaica. So as a technical director, um, mm -hmm. you're responsible for, you know, the, 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 the philosophy, your, the philosophy of, oh, the, 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 the country based on our natural ability. You're responsible for you know picking the formation the system from the senior to the to the mm -hmm. to the younger kids the younger boys mm -hmm. tell us about that please Chavon, I, I believe that we have to respect every time that we go for any any club or any national team we have to respect uh, the culture of the, the 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 country, you know, or the club, you know. So so when you go for Jamaica, um, Jamaica is pretty much a, 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 um, a attacking football. They love to be working to play as I can, I can I don't say as a Brazilian because you know say that Brazil play with with ability and. Uh, play a, 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 um, a football that is a very very aggressive football you know a very um, offensive football you know so but Jamaica loves to play in, in this in this kind of kind of way so when we take uh, Trinidad and Tobago for example for uh, when we were there, it's it's a little bit different it's a it's a country that play a little bit more with with formation with with a, a, a team work a defensive system you know because this was a culture that we find in in the in the country and um, was 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 natural thing for us because as a brazilian we love this kind of offensive football so 
to spread the, the, the philosophy was much, much, uh, much easier to us. And, uh, of course, was more accept to the Jamaicans because they love this kind of culture, to play offensive, you know? So you remember uh, those, those, uh, those skilled players that we have in, in Jamaica and uh, the way they love to play, you know? And then we just follow the natural thing that we, that we have in our mind, you know? So our culture is to play like this and then was was easier to keep this this philosophy in Jamaica as well. Okay, Shane Richards said, "How different is the youth program back in your time compared to now?" Wow, it's completely different, you know, because back in my time, I believe that the opportunity was shorter than today. You know. Okay. So when you is when we see today, um, you know how many how many. Uh, American college coach they scout in Jamaica you know <clears throat> the last time that I was in Jamaica I could I could be seen um, combine that US that MLS did in Jamaica as well so back in time we never saw this kind of this kind of uh, opportunity for for local players Okay, you know, and of course this benefit a lot the youth. So uh, I can tell you that the youths today they have more co coaches with more knowledge about the game. Jamaican coaches that are in the college that they are, they are in the communities. So it's it's easier for them to be involved in a philosophy that can help in them to get better, to get improvement in football. So back in the time, of course, we have some heroes coach that were involved, but without too much knowledge, without too much um, coaching course to be involved, was really difficult for them. And I can tell you that today, of course, this can benefit much more the youth program as we, as we were talking about. Okay. Next question. There haven't been a clear path for a transition of players through the national system. For example, on the 15 to senior team. What are your thoughts on that? And tell us the effect, philosophy, style of play, system of play has on it. Javan, always we believe that if, if I don't know if you remember that, but um we have um a vertical philosophy with all the national teams you know because uh we believe that once you have the whole model that is the senior team your under 23 has to be the same philosophy to easily help in the in in the transfer uh, in the in the in the movement between one 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 team to another, you know. So why I'm saying that, we have all the teams back in the time play playing three five three, three five two. Sorry, okay. We we play we love to play not not we love to play but was the system that adapt uh, better for ourselves when we were back in ninety five ninety six ninety seven. Okay, so our under 23 play in the same system, our under 17 play in the same system, our under 19 play in the same system, and uh, we didn't have under 15 back at the time. Okay, okay, because what we believe, we believe that if we are prepare those teams or those players to be fitting in the seniors program, right. And we have one type, one style of game to be played as a model. The other teams they must to, or they, they had to be adjusting themselves for that, you know. So if we if you ask me if I still believe in this kind of model, I can tell you that today I prefer 
to adapt ourselves to the quality of players that we have, you know, in any kind of category, to make them a functional player in any style or in any system of game, to, to preserve the quality of player to be achieving his best performance in the national seniors team. What I'm saying, doesn't matter for me today if we play 4-4-2 or 4-3-3 in, in under 17, under 15, but try or helping those guys to be adjusting themselves in any kind of system because right. I believe today that player has to be a functional player. Right. Because when we rotate in the field and uh, we are without ball, we have to become a defender, you know? Right. And, and when we have the ball, we have to become one striker, even if, if we have a goalkeeper, because the goalkeeper today has to be playing really with quality with his foot. Because if he don't play very well with his foot, we're going to have a problem with modern football. Right. You know, because the game starts from him. So we start the offensive part of the game in the team through the goalkeeper, you know? So today, I believe much more to be adjusting those players to be fitting in any system, you know? But it's, it's a different model, it's a different kind of game, it's a different perspective for every player, you know? So it's a different uh, uh, word. So every time, today we are, back in 95, Javan, 96, we didn't do much ball in, in Jamaica. was really difficult to see a game around the world. Today you turn button and then you see games around the world whatever you want you know right. you're going to to the internet you can see any game that you want so it's it's you have to adjust in this this modern situation today even in football what were some of your challenges you face as a technical director in jamaica wow 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 <laughs> <laughs> We face a lot of challenge, you know, and, and, uh, as, a, as a Caribbean country, you know how, how difficult is the resource, you know, right. the infrastructure, you know. We train in many times in different, um, we, sometimes we don't have field to train or the field is in a bad condition, you know. Right. Always, uh, you know, find fight for for better condition, for better uh, facility to be giving a quality practice for the, the guys. You know, I think that was the 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 the, the, the biggest challenge we have all the time in Jamaica. Okay, infrastructure. Okay. Infrastructure. Yeah, is still or what, or getting better? Well, in your opinion, it, it's. It's a little better in terms of um, we have a new club in Jam a new club in Jamaica, yeah. Mount Pleasant, okay. and you're investing in some quality I, fields and stuff. I know, and, um, I know the place. You know the place. Are you? I yeah, I saw a picture with you down there. Yeah, I know the place. Right? You're investing yeah. in some yeah. some fields and stuff, and yeah. I think JFF is doing a, a better job in terms of getting that's the, the matches. That's the direction. That's the quality direction. Surface. That's the direction. Yeah, but. On the other hand, the clubs, mm. such as, you know, some of the clubs cannot afford um, proper playing surface and stuff. True, so true. if you're not training on quality surface, how are you going to play on how you're gonna play surface yeah. properly? Or, or how, how are you going to give quality to the game? Right. How are you going to give quality to the game? Yeah. So the clubs now going to have to improve their infrastructure yeah. um, and stuff like that. And I think... I think the clubs out here can do a better job in terms of raising funds, raising improve funds. Their, their infrastructure. Yeah. Marketing. <laughs> right? The business yeah. part of football in Jamaica, I don't I don't think these 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 um administrator administration administrator understand the business part of football. 
I want you, you know, yeah, yeah, and let me about. tell you one thing, man. My yeah. point of view, you know, everyone wants coaching course, they want a coach school, they want academy, but I never saw someone want a, a university for administrators or a course for administrators, you know, right. because they want to improve everyone, but they don't want to improve themselves. <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay. That's my point of view. Yeah. Um, but this is not this is not this, this is not a privilege from, from Jamaica, man. We saw we see that in Brazil still, you know. Even okay. with 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 a professional football here, we some we, we saw a lot of poor administrators here as well. Poor, poor administrators. Poor, poor, poor. Poor, poor, poor. <laughs> I think I think the administrators should 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 have a base in terms of their football knowledge. You yeah, understand? They must, they must study about that as well. You, you know? must study about football and know, know about the football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know yeah. how to market a player. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yes. And then we have to know the geography of a particular area. If you have one club, say you have one club in Kingston. Right, yeah. and uh, one club in Kingston have, you know, three thousand fans, four thousand, five thousand fans. Right, mm. you have two club in Kingston. Each club, it's going to be separated because some of the clubs are going to have this amount, and other clubs are going to have this amount. So, it the, the, the supporters cannot fund that club in that year. So if you have one, it will True. be better. True. True. You understand? So I think the structure of the Premier League is causing a big problem on, on, on the development of football yeah. also. Because they because have no plan. Yeah, because <laughs> they, they have, have no plan. Six or eight clubs in, in, in the Kasafa era. Mm. More only per club in the Kasafa. Kingston yeah. and St. Andrew. Right? Yeah. And you have like, you have Arnett, Tivoli. Cavaliers. Cavaliers. Um, Harborview, Harborview, Waterhouse, Waterhouse. In, in, in the Premier League, right? Yeah. And those clubs are like close to each other. Yeah. And you don't have a club down in and over there in the Premier yeah. League. You don't have a club in Saint Mary in Premier League, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imagine you have a club in Anova, mm. and all of the corporate, all of the business person in Anova can push money in that club. Yeah. So you see the marketing now. They would have a better um the club would have more funds to do more things, build more things. You understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's your take on that? You think the the the, 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 the Premier League need to restructure? I believe that this is the man as I said to you, you know, I we, I don't believe that we should be taking decision by just what we think, you know. Right. But I believe that the, there is people with with knowledge about that to be studying what could be better for the football in Jamaica or the football, whatever they want to, to play, you know. But as I said to you, you know, this demand, this demand a, 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 clear, a clear, a clever uh, mentality for what we want and what you want to achieve with football right. in, in the country, you know? So this is for me, the, it's the, the, the way, you know? I'm not sure, I'm not sure to say to you that uh, clubs with with culture or, or clubs with, with tradition, they should just disappear because we believe that they could be fitting in, in another place. But maybe one is, someone is studying about that, what could be, help Jamaica, especially the Premier League, I believe that this is supposed to be done as well sometime, you know? So, uh, I believe that could be could be a good idea, you know? On the grassroots side of things, in terms mm -hmm. of Jamaica grassroots football, mm -hmm. um, my personal belief, mm -hmm. um, there is nothing there to improve the players mm -hmm. in the grassroots. In Jamaica, um, we don't. We, we, we only have like 
Mount Pleasant Academy, Ballers. Uh, which other one I know? You, you already know them, the academies. You already know the academies. Mm. You know, we know about Phoenix because of Craig Butler and Mount Pleasant mm. and Ballers. Right? Yeah. No, we hardly have, you know, any, 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 JFF alone cannot do it. You understand? Yeah. But yet yeah. still, you're not putting the, the right thing in place for us to improve the, 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 the younger um, athletes. Yeah. We need, I think we need to have a national under 15 competition. Yeah. Because this competition is still with the school, huh? Yeah, it's schools. Schools. They are using schools to they are trying to use schools to improve play. That yeah, that will never no. happen. No, no, no way, man. No way. I believe that uh, this has to be not that the, the school is not a, a, a good competition, you know, but especially especially by the, the youth program, the, the youngest players, I believe that academy could fit a, 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 a gap that we don't have in, in Jamaica, the structure that we don't have in Jamaica right now, you know. And um, if the clubs, you know, could be attached with the schools and work together, maybe we could get a better a better structure for development in football, especially in the youth in the youth programs. That's what okay. I believe. Um yeah. you have a lot of coach on the, the panel, right? And on, on the on the broadcast right now. Mm. And they would like to know mm. how the, how to organize a, a, a academy. And, and, and the business part of the academy. Could you elaborate on that for them, please? Well, you know, the academy. We are putting academy together here right now, you know. So the academy is not so... Uh, I got in the invitation from from one club here. They asked me to, to propose a, a methodology to be working with them. And... Um, uh, I draw a curriculum to be working by the age, you know. So, in my mind, if you have a player and they want to start the academy from six years old until 15 years old, you know. So, if you have this, this gap between six and 15 years old, breaking them in teams, you know, of course, organizing them by the age, they should have a curriculum that they have to be working and developing age by age, respecting the, the, the development of the human development, the body development, the mentality development, the attitude for, for collective individual attitude in football. So I draw all this, this, this point for them and uh, I believe that it, it, it's working pretty well, you know, because it's given a, 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 um, a way to be testing the players, analyzing them every six months, seeing how they develop, the knowledge that they have in football, the improvement that they have in their, their ability, their skills, and... Uh, the general coordination, the specific coordination, the knowledge, the tactical knowledge, the technical uh, development of players. So every single aspect of the game are involved in the academy. I believe that is the direction to put some, some structure together. And uh, what I can tell you for the business side, the business side is that, Javan, the part, I... I, I Suppose that I have a kid, you know, and I want to put in your academy. As a parent, I want to put my son in one academy and I want to know after a while what you have done with my son. How can you measure, you know, how can you give me some feedback right. from what has been developing with them. So, because when we talk about academy, we talk about 
charge the players to be playing in academy or charge the the the, the, the parents to keep them in the in the academy and uh, those guys they want especially in the club that I'm working right now and they want some feedback for what the investment they are doing with their kids you know and um, to be honest with you I don't see any kind of academy that can give you a, 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 um, a parameter you know or a comparison between how my kid they got in your in your academy and after six months how he has been developing you know okay so this is what we are trying to put together this this method methodology they are uh, this methodology is 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 giving them this this measurement and uh, i believe that works really well okay Marlon nelson said do you think the teams in concacaf are much closer now because any team can beat anyone well man i can tell you that uh depend of the the kind of investment or the kind of players that you have you know but I can still say, say yes. The football it's is a global game now, you know. So it's not a surprise for any team right now to be facing other team. Uh, suppose I'm here in Brazil and I want to play against Jamaica tomorrow, you know, or in one week, I can go for the internet and see all the players. I can see where they play. I can see a, 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 the last game that they play. The, you know, everything is, is on our hand. So the knowledge is there. Right. So this give more, more uh, uh, give to the, to the coach, especially to the coach, knowledge from the other teams. So it's, it's easier today to prepare a team to play against another team. Of course, when you play against, against, Teams that has more, more, uh, more capacity of investment capacity is going to be difficult for you. You know, if you play against Manchester City today, of course it will be difficult because the kind of investment that Manchester City has, he has money to have the best players in the world. So sure. you right. know, so of course that don't give you the the the, the equality between one team to another. But when you see in CONCACAF, you don't have this difference so much, you know? So it's easier for, for the teams today to be a little bit more balanced between them. Um, so do you think that Jamaica, hmm. Jamaica players that are being called, called up from the, in, from the in, in English base or the England league, right? Such as Moore, Pinnock, and you're watching those players, right? To be honest with you, I don't know much about them. You know, I know about Michael Antonio, uh, no. right? No. Uh, no about no. who? Sorry. Michael Antonio. Yes, I, I heard about him. You know, I yeah, saw he signed, him. He signed, yeah, he signed for Jamaica now. He's going to play. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's Michael good... Antonio. Mm. A, a player from Swansea. Lowe. Okay. okay. Damien Lowe's son is also there. Damien Lowe. Uh, Leon Bailey. Yeah. Andre Blake. Um, yeah. We have our next person, Turgot. Okay. Andre Gray. But the, the, those guys, they are already in the system. Yeah, they are already in the system. Yeah. Only, I was, only, I, I thought only that Antonio you, don't play for us yet. Okay. I thought that you you are talking about about uh, this new bunch of players that Theodore has been calling for. Yeah, the new bunch of players. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we have a quality, we have a quality set of players. Yeah. And personally, I think we have mm. one of the best um, firepower offensive um, players in in in, in Kangakov right now. Yeah, and our defense yeah. is good. Um, watching the game this morning, mm. you know, opened my eyes to see, um, to see a good defensive team. Mm. Understand? Remember, these players are not gel. As yet. Yeah. And, um, as, as I told you before, I didn't have a chance to see this game, you know, because you got to go and watch it. Yeah, yeah, I have, <laughs> you to, have go, to go and watch it. Yes, I have to try, you know, because 
this morning I was really, really busy and then could not see, you know, could not try to find out, you know, but I will, I will. Yes, you got to watch it. Um, uh -huh. So, based on that match, yeah. it let me start to imagine when Whitmore, mm -hmm. you know, fit the uh -huh. puzzle, right? Okay. Put uh -huh. in the, 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 the so-called better players in terms like Leon Bailey, Antonio, mm -hmm. um, the low, and so forth. And you know, we have this Ravel is the Morrison. Yeah. You know Ravel Morrison? Yes, yes, of course. Ravel Morrison, yes. Quite okay. a player. Yeah. You need to so watch too much. <laughs> that I will. I will try, man. That's the that's the chemistry that the, the coach has to be, you know, cooking in cooking. the team. Yeah, put some cooking oxtail. Yes, <laughs> cooking oxtail, man. <laughs> Yes, Bobby Reed. yeah. Also, Bobby Reed, Marlon, thanks for yeah, that one. Bobby Reed yeah, from yeah. from Fulham, quality player also. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think Whitmore have a hard task in terms of picking this team once all players are playing to it's their good, potential. It's good to have this kind of problem. It's a big problem. Yeah, but it's good. It's a good. good problem. Good problem. But but sometimes yeah, I can make some serious mistakes. Yeah, but but the bad problem is that when you don't have a choice. Right. <laughs> right. You know, it's good when you have this kind of trouble, man. You know, choosing players is, is good to, to have this kind of problem. I prefer that, you know. I prefer that. I can tell you that you're never going to, to uh, fulfill all the interests that you have there. So you love one, I love another one. I like this kind of player, someone like the other kind of player, you know, but in the end of the day, the coach has to take decision and take this choice. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to wrap up this live now. Hope yes. everybody get a chance to, to, to send in their question to ask Sir Alfredo Montesso. Yes, it was an intriguing live. I learned a lot of things. I hope you guys learn a lot of things. Um, talk about the grassroots program, the current squad, you know, 98 World Cup and stuff like that, people. Thanks, every, thanks to everybody who have joined the live and persons who also interact, you know, sending their questions for us to ask Sir Alfredo Montesso. And I want to thank him also to give me the time of day to come on, you know, come on this panel and see sports TV. i happy that you come and give us the time. Javan, you saw the you saw the memory that I put for you in the in, in the wall but in, in my back eh? in the, my backyard. No. No? No. Could not see there? Oh, 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 the 98, I saw it. Huh? <laughs> oh yes, see there. Yes, I man. saw it. <laughs> I did it for you guys. I love every time to to remember. I have this the, the, this don't leave my wall, man. Never. Never. <laughs> you saw there? Dion yes. Burton, Steve Malcolm, Barrett Theodore, Peter Cargill, Ian Goodson, all of them there. Man. All of your boys. Those good yeah. <laughs> your boys. Your respect, boys. man. Respect. Yeah. Th thank you again, Sir Alfredo. Thank and, you for um, the invitation, man. Thank you hope, for the invitation. Hope, hope you can come back another time. All I right? will. Just invite so, me. I'm going to end the live, people. You stay, stay out for it. Don't come off as it. We're going to end the live, people. Thanks again, everyone who have turned, tuned in to this live. And, and, and we see you again. Smash the like button. Like and subscribe to Unseen Sports TV. I'm out. Great, my friends. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was a nice. It was nice. One hour and five minutes, and then we, we just don't. Don't you know? You come pass like, like a pass yeah, like a quick like like quickly, you know, man. Quickly. Yeah, it was nice. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> okay, keep in touch, okay? Yeah, I'll keep in touch. All right, man. Take care. <laughs>